signing of the peace um, agreement promising to run peaceful campaigns. Well, presidential candidate of Action Alliance, Hamza Al-Mustafa, was at the signing of that peace pact and joins us now mm. on Newsnight. Well, thank you so much for joining us thank on you. Newsnight tonight. It's First off, what do you make of that whole um, event? Do you really take it seriously? Is it some sort of charade or do you think it's just something mm. we just have to do for the sake of it? Well, first of all, this is my first time appearing at it. And uh, it gave us the opportunity to meet ourselves alongside, uh, meaning candidates, alongside party chairmen and spokespersons of parties and uh, campaign organizations. We also met uh, notable Nigerians who organized it, including their partners from uh, outside Nigeria, particularly from Europe. Uh, that meeting in itself alone and then with the messages from INEC and the police uh, in terms of the expectations of every party and a candidate speaks for itself. Uh, that meeting in itself and to any serious minded person knowing the state of Nigeria today alone that uh, sends the right message to know what is expected of every party and candidate. The signing and the content or the messages of the signing in itself also is another. <coughs> mm. But I am taking it serious, and I know there are the candidates I have spoken to. I think I've sh I went around and shaking hands with almost everybody. Uh, I know very well each and every one that I know from the interactions we have had, they are taking it serious. All right, let's talk about some of the interactions you had mm. at that uh, peace mm. accord mm. signing. We mm. saw in the uh, mm. you know video there, you mm. had this... Uh, uh, I don't know what to call it, between yourself no, and uh, uh, Shuare. What exactly was that about? What well, was that encounter um, about? I think he was there far uh, ahead of me. He arrived ahead of me and I discovered he was next to me. So I went round to greet everybody and I greeted him as usual. But uh, young, my younger brother he is, he bared his mind over his grudges over the past governments and then his expectations of me while we were in government that I didn't do so, that was right. He has every right to say so. I have respect for him. He's a young man. He is full of energy. For him to have come forward seeking to provide leadership to Nigeria, I earn him respect. If tomorrow he becomes the president, definitely will have my support. And if on the other hand, God Almighty grant us the opportunity to be, uh, surely he will come on board in rendering service to Nigeria. Okay. We, some of us, are resolved mm -hmm. to say there should be a new beginning that is scientifically seen to be driven, not only in entrenching democracy in itself, but in having a new course for Nigeria to now take that is safe, that is real, that is accountable, that is sincere, that is strategic, as much as immediate issues that have been treated. Talking about Shawara, you know, bearing mm. his mind mm. on um, the performance of past mm. administration and, mm. you know, your role as well. Mm. Uh, two weeks ago, you were a bit emotional about the security situation oh, yes. in, in Nigeria. Now, with mm. your experience as the former chief mm. security advisor mm. to late General Sani Abacha, mm. um, and again, take, considering the, the position you're vying for at mm. the moment, mm. I'm really curious to know what sort of security architecture mm. would you prefer mm. to resolve mm. Nigeria's insecurity problem, rather Nigeria's mm. terrorism that's mm. actually bedeviling the country at the mm. moment? Mm. Well, thank you so much for this question. It's sensitive, and I thank you for it. You see, looking at security from the perspective that I hear most people talk about is a fundamental mistake. You will end up repeating the same thing in Western time, and Western Nigeria's time. An insurgency that you do not understand where the valve is for you to puncture it through and terminate it. Definitely at the end of the day, you'll just be going around pouring water on a stone. You'll be busy Western people's time and your own time. So once there is any insurgency, primarily, the mistake is the fact that many people across the world, now not only in Nigeria, professionals around the world believe that all insurgencies are the same. In the laboratory of management of insurgencies around the world, there was not, there is not, and can never be identical insurgencies in life. Okay, so how oh, do you... Oh, difficult for people to understand. Oh, really? Help us understand that. How right. do you diagnose the... <coughs> insecurity that Nigeria faces, the terrorism and 
all of that insurgency. You say there's no two similar insurgencies. There, are, there was Dad, not. Dad knows it for us, and you have been quoted as saying mm. that mm. you will fix yes. insurgency yes. in six months. Of course. Tell us how you're going to do it. If that. we have a malaria that was uh, unfortunately, or if we have typhoid, unfortunately, and it was being treated for malaria, the typhoid will continue for as long as it will exist because you have not attacked it. First, you have to know what is it? When did it start? There are yet stick of numerous questions to ask. I wouldn't want to waste your time with it, but there are numerous questions. First of all, you have to establish the history of the insurgency in itself and treat it on its own merit. But the yardstick of treating it is there is standard. But then getting to know the differences between insurgency A in country C alongside your own are uh, numerous things. When you identify all these and look at the measures to contain it, on the other hand, the fundamental thing you will look at is what was the genesis of the insurgency in itself? Mm -hmm. Then you now sit down and keep that aside. On the other hand, you now have bring out a template to see what are those things promoting it. Is it at home or from outside? And that's what we want to know. Yes. Is it from? Is it at home or from right. outside? I'm coming. Great. Then when you look at these three issues, then you can now sit down and look at yourself. What have you been doing with it that you wasted this much time? Mm. Unless you now take it and have a research in it and then put all these three issues and looking at yourself. You have not started, you are wasting your time. As far as the present insurgency is concerned, I have been saying that it all started from 1st November 1999. The question is, mm. why? Why? How old is it? Mm -hmm. You see, as Nigerians, unfortunately, we are yet to know who we are. And it's in not knowing who we are, and in managing who we should be seen to be. Can you walk us down history lane when you say it started in 1999? Yes, what triggered course. it? Yes, I was in prison 1st November 1999 mm -hmm. when it all started. There are some sensitive things I wouldn't want to say here temporarily, but I will tell you because I've said it in some certain places. The resources God has given this country is what started the insurgency in Nigeria. As far back as 1995, some of us put this country own technical supervisory researches in trying to know what is kept where by God Almighty in Nigeria. You see, that's why it disturbs some of us when they, you, we hear some people say Nigeria is poor, Nigeria is borrowing a huge amount of money, and we are go, merely go around, going around some certain cycles, calling names, and then not, com not coming up with new initiatives, not becoming creative, in terms of creating wealth from within or from outside. All the time I have had all governments that came and passed, including the one I served, the opportunities of creating wealth from outside was what I never heard of. And it exists, is there. For you to now keep this country afloat as one of the richest on earth. Yeah, and that's right. why the pains of knowing where Nigeria is today uh, gave some of us the, the push, the energy to now uh, have uh, uh, gone around some certain countries around the world because I started it since 1995 in knowing some certain things that God Almighty has kept hidden in Nigeria, in all our zones. Okay, uh, so uh, this I'll, I'll, I'll let you <coughs> land on that. I mean, there's <coughs> so much we need to pack in. Now, mm. you want to rule Nigeria seven years after leaving prison. Mm. Um, do you think the mm. clouds mm. that hung over uh, your role in the Abacha administration mm. and the events that followed that mm. led to your mm. imprisonment. Mm. Do you think those clouds have mm. cleared in a way that Nigeria and Nigerians can mm. say and look mm. at you and say, mm. look, mm. our Mustafa mm. uh, retired major mm. can actually lead mm. Nigeria. Mm. Why do you want to rule Nigeria? I believe I have all it takes to provide leadership for this country. My experience and the knowledge of this country in itself is another. The in-depth research we have done for five years, eight months now, and then the discoveries we came up with is not what money can buy, and we are holding it to our chest. And the issue of the propaganda I went through yesterday on the role of keeping General Abacha's government afloat, I will always hit my chest to say, if only Nigerians have gotten to know the findings of the Joint Intelligence Bureau of the whole country,
including private intelligence bodies around the world that were there to terminate the government of General Butcher himself and all of us. And then we were succeeded in holding on against eight coups. On the eighth coup, that was when General Butcher was uh, killed. We held on to that. So Nigerians have not gotten to know what exactly happened and how we went through. So you're Why saying you had a, a I'm vision coming, for You asked me a question. Yes, I, right. Let me, because it's a very vital question. All right. Holding on to a government or holding on to keep government afloat is something. My role and my, the anger of some certain people on me was simply because we played role in keeping a government. I was, I was a soldier. I was sworn to oath of allegiance, oath of commission, oath of office. I held on to that. I have never betrayed oath. I will never ever betray oath. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter the situation. I'm not that type but of. Was you I'm not that type of a soldier. Well, see, yeah, see, mm -hmm. the worth of a soldier in any given country is his character, is his mind, is his attitude, his commitment and loyalty to his country. Some of us we have taken oath to stay. We are loyal to Nigeria, and we have done it, and we will do it forever. Well, not to make this about General Late General Sani Abacha. Are you saying that all See, the late general did for this country you, was you in the best a, interest you, of the country? You ask me a question. Yes. All you have to do, if the question is sensitive, allow me to answer it first. I went through propaganda established by a court of law. I was kept away for 15 years. I was in solitary detention for five years, two months. I was tortured beyond what you can describe as a journalist in a quick time. Mm. Are you, the fact that you see me the way you see me, it's a miracle on its own. Mm -hmm. I'm back on my feet. It's by the grace of God Almighty. I'm here. I was taken to, I appeared before 14 justices or judges, uh, including uh, uh, magistrate courts in Lagos, all put together in 15 years. 14. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a thing where you are tried without proof of evidence, without list of witnesses, just kept there, and at any given time something happens? They will now terminate your stay from one court and shift you to the other. While that was going on, and I was not meeting anybody outside, papers were told to write whatever was detected to them. And we're I was giving kept, you that opportunity. I was kept. I That's was kept. Yeah. And then there was a writing team yes. that was misinforming Nigerians about us. The me you see is the me that was. And I'm asking you, you see, to clarify. And, and all we say, uh, all we say is. Yeah. That's why we need all we to say seize this opportunity. Records to clear records the air. speaks right i challenge you by saying this yes. take a look at my records in the army i have never ever committed an offense again i'm going back no, to the no, same no, question no i want you to i want you to conduct a research i'm going to go back Hold to the on. same question as a it cadet has... as a cadet even i have mm -hmm. never ever been found wanting to commit an offense Everything and it's a real thing it's a real everything thing. you're saying comes <coughs> down to one point and that's the mm. point you made earlier mm. you stand mm. by what you mm. did mm. and again i do not want to make this interview mm. about the late mm -hmm. general yeah. and i'm saying mm. are you saying here right now right. that everything the general did while in power mm. was for the interest of the country yes i know that you're saying yes to yes that. i know that in spite of see, the benefits of hindsight see, hold, on, hold on hold on okay propaganda that is not dissected is believed by the listener Propaganda that is sold to the media is believed by him that narrated it. Propaganda that is sold and agreed as a contract is accepted and assimilated by the disseminator. Who now punctured all what was up, all what that had happened? You see, there is what is called psychological warfare. Psychological warfare is a scheme of winning your opponent before even the war started. This aspect of it was what the enemies of General Butcher put together, cooked, Along with, their enemy, along with his enemies from outside Nigeria that did it together. See, a right. time will come to mm. say there is the need to X-ray General Butcher's government head to toe, and I am an advocate of that. What were those things General Butcher was confronted with? Mm. That's not what I'm talking about. General Butcher has ruled and left. Documents are there. All these services, all ministries, all parastatals served with him. But you see, the problem is mm. every Nigerian cannot have access to the documents that you refer you to. Have, uh, you if, have the uh, information of... Oh, uh, yes, freedom of information. Free, yeah, of course. We know, we know about Search all of that. Search for it. Get we it. We know about all of that. But we need mm. you to mm. seize this yes. opportunity to mm. clear the air mm. on so many issues, mm. Mm. including mm. the death, the unfortunate mm. death of MK Wabiola. Nigerians mm. do need you closure see, see, so see. that you can confidently actually I, I, run I'm not, for this I'm not stopping you. Right. I faced 
numerous panels. Yeah. When eventually they allowed me to talk was uh, three years after they arrested me and after they have paid money to numerous papers and magazines to be abusing me on daily basis. What was printed in the night, radio and television will echo it in the morning. And I never had any opportunity to talk. Up until, up to, uh, up until when Oputa Panel started, mm -hmm. the entire country believed Mustafa was one hell of a giant who could not even write his name. I was busy on printing my name. A major who does not know God Almighty, who could not speak English. Yeah, but what is the Hold on, hold on. This was a propaganda. What is the counter-narrative no, that no, you're no. putting out there to counter whatever's been out there for I'm years? here. The Oputa Panel came and left. The question you're asking me was thrash there. But so many people were quick in halting the findings of the panel, number one. They are also quick in refusing media to carry, number two. Other than the fact that it was being shown live, we were not to be heard. I was, you know how many times they said they should kill me? You uh, you hold on, you hold on, hold on, hold on. You were the most feared man no, in the feared for what? administration. Okay. Tell us. Well, auntie, why are you afraid? You're not afraid of me? Well, maybe because of time. No. We're Don't no say, longer no. as afraid as see, we used see. to be. Do you know my background? Absolutely not. You does it. So tell us Hold what we does want to If you know. know my background, yes. If you know my background, mm -hmm. then you should be un able to understand who we were, okay. who we are, and who we should be seen to be. Now, see, as you're running for um, for elections <coughs> in 2020, let's just mm -hmm. go back to the issue of why we're here. There's something really key, mm -hmm. you know, that I would like you to address. It's a mm -hmm. good thing you've addressed the strategy for security, mm -hmm. which is no, important. I haven't. No, but I mean, you have you have hinted. You have given us a bit see, of a hint. See, I'm glad you see, know you have one. No, see, yes. all I want, yes. right? If you are asking a sensitive question, yes, have the patience, okay, for the questioned to learn. Okay, great. If you are in a hurry, probably these answers may be beneficial to those in the system to start correcting it. That might save lives. That might might save some incidents tomorrow. And it might give direction or direction for some people to have a rethink. So the more sensitive the question, the more time to the question is an advice. That's all. So we, we still need you to respond to those sensitive questions that we have Ask asked. Them. Because it would be nice for Nigerians to get closure and for you yourself Ask to them. get closure. Ask the circumstances mm. uh, that led to the death of MQ Abiola. I have said it at the Puta panel. Can you say it? Can you tell us now? I what, said what it exactly? at the Puta panel. What I said say both it? Abacha right. and Abiola were killed. I said so. Okay, by whom? I said so. You were all hold on. When they released me, I'm, I, didn't I say to Nigerians that I'm writing books? Correct? Mm -hmm. It's the most sensitive question. See, I tell you, let me just give you this answer. The intellectuals in Nigeria or the elites, let me put it, elites, uh, in most cases, those saddle with some certain responsibilities. They don't look at the patriotism to Nigeria. They look at their personal interests first. And I'm coming to speak that with examples in this country. A lot of distortions came to the fore. And personal interests were addressed rather than the real issues. Simply because people who either have had enough money and they now have come to invest in the media. They distort facts. They distort our history. As such misgivings to some of us, the way we see it, are actually what has kept many Nigerians ill-informed out of realities on the ground. Okay. One of the reasons why some of us are in politics today. Mm -hmm. I tell you, anything you hear me say that I said we can do it within a certain time frame is doable. Okay. Let's, let's but for you to do it in Nigeria, mm -hmm. You should be prepared to fight some certain forces. Okay. And unless you don't know these forces, unless you know these forces, you can't succeed. Do you know those hold forces? Hold on, hold on, hold on. There is a government in place today, correct? Mm. I'm giving an example, and I'm daring you to make this response. Before this government came to power, there were a lot of promises. It is one, go one thing to have the promises and to have allowable projects or intentions on what to do for a country. In Nigeria, you have to do it in a reversal order. Meaning, when you come up with a policy, you should equally sit back and work out a certain policy, protective measures that will guide and protect the policy to a logical conclusion of its execution for the common good of Nigerians. If you don't do that, 
you are wasting your time and you are wasting uh, uh, you are wasting your own time and that of your country the intention is good but in nigeria unless you understand the system see it is only in nigeria the very second you have sworn a leader in that very second clock will kick start on how to get him removed out of office we have to know our country we have to know the peculiarities of the environment we found ourselves so to some of us, right from numerous uh, years past, I think there are so many issues that has to do with experiences in knowing the environment. And in Nigeria, it doesn't matter how much you know, unless you have the knowledge and the experience of the environment, success in providing administration mm -hmm. to Nigeria towards some laudable projects and for their successes will be difficult. Okay. There's something you mentioned earlier at the beginning of this interview. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked about the issue of Nigeria borrowing, the fact that the country isn't poor. Yes. Yes. We do have the resources yeah, sure. to take us through. You also did mention in that mm -hmm. same, but I'm, you know, it's unfortunate we keep on have, you know, referring to the late general, mm -hmm. where you said that everything he did was for the interest of the country. Uh, sure. Now, the mm -hmm. last repatriation mm -hmm. of loot mm -hmm. by the former general mm -hmm. sparked uh, an argument or a debate mm -hmm. on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Mm. And that's why I want you to clear the air on this propaganda because mm. it really mm. goes mm. a long way mm. to talk mm. about how you are going to mm. be handling the issues. Mm. There are those who said mm. that the monies being repatriated today mm. were kept by the former general mm. for the interest of Nigeria. So at the point you're talking about leaders see, see, cutting away funds, up, how do you see up that? Up until I regained my freedom in 2014. Yes. Mm. And the press conference I gave in Ikeja, yes. people were not aware. Okay. But there are some notable Nigerians who are aware. Mm -hmm. But they were afraid to talk, and they are still afraid to come to the fore to speak. Okay. This is what happened. Okay. Soon after Abacha came to power, four months after, there was to be a coup against him. At that material time, the coup failed, so they conceived an idea on creating sanctions against the government of Nigeria with the sole view of inflicting pains on Nigerians. And then they will now, once people now become, uh, find themselves in a, in a problem where there is no importation of anything that will cushion the effect of bringing the social support to people, then they will be seen to support any certain force that will uproot a bunch out of office. To uproot a bunch out of office, then it shows you are attacking us, because that's the, oath, the money, the, the work given to me. Mm -hmm. Correct? to hold, to protect, and hold the seat of government. I'm not boasting, but you check, you will get to know. We are not um, fake in any way, in any respect. So how are you going hold to on, address? Hold on, hold uh, on. She asked me a question. <laughs> okay. She asked me a big question. All right, all right. I thought you landed on that. The sanctions that was coordinated by some notable Nigerians, that was agreed upon, that was to assist in the word they use, uprooting the government, uprooting was the word. Then that brought about an idea about countries that were also facing sanctions at that material time. So Nigerians or the government then had to study. And one of the means is to give money to private sector so that importation, even if there are sanctions on the official bodies of government, then definitely the privates will be allowed. And so they can continue to transact around the world and be bringing things in for Nigeria. For that, money was released, money was held. Stakeholders in Nigeria have had a meeting with the president. You see, in providing leadership to Nigeria, one should fear God Almighty and at all times speak the truth, not personal interest of the people. Okay. That was what I know. Right. Unless if there is any other thing outside that. So money was entrusted in the hands of people to say, continue to import for Nigerians. It's a revolving uh, uh, kind so, of so money. So the money given to the private sector that's to I'm telling you, the, I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I know. Okay. That's why you see, I had the first word about Chalud in 1999, around December. 1999, I was in Kirikiri. They took me there. I had the word loot. It was, to me, a shock, because I didn't know. And if there's anything, some of us will know. As president, so are you see, saying there's see, no possibility? See, see, um, look at me. Yes. yes. Look at me. Right. Look at me. Okay. I served in sensitive places in governments, correct? Mm -hmm. General Butcher's government wasn't the only one I served. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. But I challenge you one thing, and I want you to take note of this. 
is there, was there a time, any person will say, most of us taking 10 naira from government. So what you're saying, we need to... You know, it's a difficult... One couple, if I have told you, I challenge two governments, eyeball to eyeball. I challenge me, panels. Yes, let me bring this in very quickly. Is it, an, we'll is it an easy thing to do? I have done it, and I will say it till I die. I will continue to challenge government. I am not the type that will take off to say, I'm coming to take one naira out of government. I'm okay. not that type. What you're saying, in effect, is you mm. knew everything mm. from A to Z about the financial transactions or no. any other you can say that. Government is big. Okay. Hold okay. on. What was my schedules of office? CSO. Mm -hmm. is, should CSO know what is happening in every ministry, in every parastata? Is CSO to now be the... Is, I wasn't a member of any council. What I knew, I knew. Government is big. Hold yeah. on. Government is big. Mm -hmm. Can I, for example, sit down to know, to say that all the ambassadors serving Nigeria from Ministry of Foreign Affairs on all their activities are known by Mustafa is it normal yeah but the statement you made uh, mm. appears to me like you appears to uh, you, you so everything no. but Gov let's talk about security no, hold very on. quickly we government, have to let you government go is soon. big right so for you to say I have known all that happened Great. in government is wrong what I knew I told this country what I knew was what I stood for okay now mm. you I want <clears throat> willing how ready will you be and able will mm. you be to step on the sensitive toes that you sort of like referred to earlier in mm. dealing with insecurity challenges that nigeria mm. faces mm. because mm. you've been quoted as saying mm. that you know these people mm. who are behind oh, yes. the insecurity oh, yes. in nigeria oh, yes. are you willing even to name them oh yes see listen listen in the business of management of a state and when you are talking about country, the whole world over, there is a practice called adoption, sorry, creation, maintenance, and adoption of serialization of something called personality data profiling. In personality data profiling, the systems are on oath to know what may constitute a threat to a, to a, threat to a state. Mm -hmm. That is being managed. When we were there, I was part of knowing what was going on. Fifteen years, I was tortured and sent away. If I'm given back an opportunity in managing Nigeria tomorrow, these are structures I have known. I will dust it up, and I know what to do with it. You have laws, you have, you have morality, you have religion, you have democracy, you also have politics and diplomacy to manage, to get things right. And this country will be back on course. It's tact. Okay. It's knowledge mm -hmm. and experience and synergy with forces at home and outside to get things right for your country. In four, just in bullet points, four, right. let's just get straight to the point here. Right, right. I'm bringing that question to you again because mm -hmm. this is really crucial. Mm. As the former mm. chief security advisor mm. to the late general, mm. how do you plan to tackle insecurity? Just give it to me in four bullet points. One, I give you one, and in one there are six. First, any manifesto, any thinking of any administrator, any plan by any country in any democracy or in any form of government are resting on six things, only right. six. First is empowerment of your youth. Second, dignity of your women. Third, management of your elders and four securing the nation number six is returning your country to the mainstream of the international community's destination regarding your economy security diplomacy and relevance the word relevance sounds nothing but it's a fundamental thing and lastly is looking at your historical background and then looking at your core value and heritage and getting it restored. These six things, any country in the world, any means of governance is the understanding of the leadership in providing the six to the people. Once you key in on this mm -hmm. and you know what it takes, each of these points I talked about, each is a volume of school on its own. Absolutely. The capacity to get to know this is the problem. And I know how long it took us to have understood this and to know it in relation to Nigeria. 
and every field is touched in this. Well, mm. we'll have to leave it there, mm. uh, Hamza uh, Mustafa, retired major, uh, presidential candidate of Action Alliance. Thank you Thank so you. much for Thank joining you. us on Newsnight uh, tonight. It's a pleasure.